Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are gonna to be making a branding iron. Now this is one that I made about four years ago, five years ago, something like that. And I, it was before I started making videos for most things, so I didn't actually shoot this one. It's a fairly simple thing that I had 3D printed and shaped together. It totally cost me about uh, 12 to 13 bucks, something around that. And I've wanted to make another one. Now this one's only about an inch in diameter, so it's not that big, but I wanna make bigger ones. So today we're actually gonna be making this branding iron. It's Hey, that's a, a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go through this step by step and figure out how do we get this 3D printed, how do we put it all together and uh, get ourselves our branding iron for something relatively cheap. Let's dive in. Now, we need to 3D print ourselves a head. So there's the little one and we're gonna make the bigger one this time. It's basically the exact same thing, just bigger. I'm gonna come over here to Tinkercad. It is a free 3D CAD software and this will give you a file in the end that you can send to any 3D printer out there to create what you want. It is a little bit tricky to, to work through, but if you go online, there are a ton of great tutorials that take you through this. I'm making mine with a quarter inch shank on the back and it's about an inch and a half in diameter. You can put some text into it, change them into 3D, then throw it all into a single item and you can then export that into your file. I'm not going into this in great detail because there are lots of other good tutorials on that. Once you have this 3D file, you can upload it to Shapeways. This is the 3D printer I use um, and they will transfer it out. The, initially the size was a bit too big so we had to go back and, and change the size down because I didn't want to pay $26,000 for one that was 30 feet in diameter. <laughs> but once we got it to the right size with steel and then with a bronze finish on it, we we're ready to work with it. Ooh! Oh wow, that was fast. Came in the mail. Uh, it was actually only a couple weeks. So they, they, they turned them around really quickly. So you can see what it ends up like. It's just uh, about a quarter inch thick on the, the top, eighth inch for the base, eighth inch for the text, and then a quarter inch shank coming off the back. Now on that shank, we want to tap it, or I guess we want to dye it. Um, we want to cut threads into that quarter inch shank. So we have a, basically a three quarter inch bolt coming off the back. Um, Shapeways will do that for you, but it is far more expensive than the 3D printing. So it's just easier to use a die that you have with a quarter 20 and work it down. Um, on this one, I just had it to file it off a bit so I could get it started. Uh, if you just taper it a little bit, it makes it much, much easier to get this on there. Good pressure, even placement, and you can start to get this cranking down on there. Don't need the threads to go down all the way. Um, I just need it to go down enough that it holds on well lubricate the threads so that it's working in there and uh, eventually you will have a bolt sticking out of the back of this. And from this point on it's really well straightforward. We are going to put on a, a union nut. Um, so this is a quarter inch union nut that will thread onto one side and this will allow us to put a bolt into the other side and connect it easily. Now we need to work on the handle and I'm going to be making mine out of a chunk of red oak I had lying around. Uh, it's about what, inch and a half by inch and a half uh, block that I can shape down into the handle I want. I want to keep it octagonal. I like the octagonal feel. I like that for a lot of my handles. Um, but one of the easiest ways to do an octagon is to draw a circle and then plane that circle down into a square where all the square sides just touch the circle. And then you can put corner lines that go either side that just connect to the outside of the circle on the corners. And that will then give you your eight-sided octagon. And theoretically, all eight sides should be equal. Then you can put it back in the vise and plane down those sides so that you get a nice smooth octagon with all eight sides corresponding and pretty. It's a relatively simple process. It just takes a little bit of uh, um, well, geometry and thinking through it and it goes really quickly. I think it was only like five or six minutes from block to this point right here. Next thing I need to do is find the middle point so that I can drill a hole all the way through this. I wanna drill a hole from one end to the other. Now keeping a bit perfectly on track means that it's gotta be sharp. And so I'm going to sharpen my auger bits. Um, and if you wanna see videos on that, I have those. Now I could go all the way from one side to the other, but I find it much easier to drill from one side most of the way through and then come in from the other side and meet it halfway. You get a much cleaner surface. I'm also using the ring trick on here so that I know when I am level uh, and then you have to back it out and that's what I was doing there while the ring was up on the, the shrink. Uh, so we can flip it over and then drill from the other side here and then the ring lets you know if you're level. If it gets too close to the threads then you gotta lower it down. If it gets too far away from it you gotta raise it up. Woohoo! Hey, it sticks out the other side. Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> so now we got a bolt running all the way through this. I have a long quarter inch um, a, a carriage bolt. 
and this will then fit in there and house nicely. Uh, the only thing is I want to um, I want to shape it down so it's not quite so um, well annoying. So I'm going to plane down one square side down to a circle I have drawn around the the uh, hole coming out. And then I'm going to rotate it and do it as a square, tapering four sides down to that ring. And then rotate it again and do the other four sides down to that ring. And that way I'll have a nice even octagon. For the butt end, I'm going to just do it with a chisel. And I'm not going to take it all the way down to the ring, but I'm going to get it rel relatively close. I'm just chamfering these edges um, fairly heavily, as you can see right about here. Going around on all eight sides, and that just gives you that nice octagonal angled look on it file down the edges and make anything that isn't smooth nice and smooth and now we're ready to assemble it put in a washer and then two nuts we want to be able to lock these two nuts against each other actually in the end i decided not to put the washer on there uh, as the washer stuck out a little bit past the, the flanges so we're going to have the uh, um, hexagon nut against the octagonal handle which just looks a little weird but hey it's a shock tool <laughs> and we can then thread that onto the uh the union nut that we had earlier dip it in boiled linseed oil, and voila! Ooh, we are happy. A little bit of paste wax, and we're, we're good with this. Now to heat it up, I just use a propane torch. It only takes like 30, 40 seconds in the propane torch, and then you can test it, and you can see what you get. And we are happy. Ooh yeah, I like that. So there you have it. This one, it didn't, didn't cost that much. I think shipping and everything, the, uh, the 3D printing was like 20 bucks total. Um, and it is actually out of stainless steel and then it's plated with brass. So it's a, a fairly conductive metal and you can make it in any shape you want. You just have to figure out the CAD program to create it. The rest of it is a wooden block with a hole through it you can put a bolt on. Um, a lot of people are going to be asking, aren't you burning yourself? No, the wood is actually a pretty good insulator. Every now and then I have to tighten the nuts down a little bit. Um, but it, it goes on pretty well. And as long as I don't touch the, the shank, it uh, <laughs> don't have any problem. Uh, with this one, I've probably done two, two and a half hours of constant branding when I do all of my strops. So I, I've done it that long without burning my hand as long as I'm just holding the wooden part. Um, it works really well. So for this one, I'm going to be doing more of my furniture projects. So I'm not going to be running it quite as long as I run this little one I do for the leather strops. So I hope you like this. It was a relatively quick and easy project that most people can whip out. Once you get this printing, it doesn't take that long at all. So I hope you like it. If you do have any questions or ideas or something like that, let me know. I'd love to answer those. I do go through as many down below as I possibly can. So I think that's about it for today. If you did like it, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Also, remember there is that option in the bell. You can get all notifications or some notifications. That really does help out the channel. And I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You are helping make this channel better, and thank you for that. And for the patrons, we did actually have the live video in the shop when we were making this and several other projects, so you can come and see how those are done live um, and while we're doing this step by step. So I think that's about it. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Boy, I, uh, I thought I knew what I was doing when I created the Wood by Right brand, but now I actually created the Wood by Right brand. How do we put it all together? Ow, it's hot. How do we put